Hey, Evelyn. We're being raided. You might want to get up. I'm sorry. I didn't wake you up. I didn't know you were there. I'm going to help her out. Can I get my stuff because I, I'm kind of disoriented? Yeah, yeah. Do you have a bag to put your stuff in? Yeah. Okay. Um. Why are you going to cover your stuff later? Do you want to get someone to help her move her stuff out of the park? I think she needs help. Like, you're gonna help her if you leave. What are you going with? Her? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, if you need help, I might go over there. I don't know. I think they're bad. I'm not going to do it. First day I've seen it, um, I'd heard rumors that it was really awful. <laughs> and as soon as I walked in there, it was like I like took my breath away. I was so shocked and saddened and overwhelmed. Um, it was heartbreaking. I, you know, like that was our home, and that you know, to see this just as piles of our possessions, just so so disrespected and so thoroughly destroyed, is really just like. It just hurts, <laughs> you know? It just hurts. I, I cried pretty <laughs> much the whole time. The way they had it, everybody's stuff was like garbage. It was the worst scene that I could have seen from people who I slept with, I ate with, smacked hands with, had conversations. I just couldn't believe the stuff that was there, broken up audio equipment, um, sleeping bags that had all types of stains, um, people's um, shoes. It reminded me of when I was in New Orleans after Katrina and even Vermont after Irene watching, you know, people's houses that have just been destroyed by this, like, by a flood or earthquake or whatever, you know, like, that's what it looked like. It's people's clothing and musical instruments and electronics and sleeping bags are all just, you know, trampled and destroyed and slashed and the tents are just crumpled and broken. We had just established our tent as like a little community home, which was really special. There were a lot of us living in there. Oh, they're cutting it up. That's the women's safe tent that they're cutting up with knives right now. That's the tent that we put up to keep women safe, the women's only tent. There's a lot of damaged items in there. Do, do you have any information about how I have, how so these damages occurred? We don't know. I don't know. And if anything was damaged or lost, they can fill a, a claim uh, form against the city. They were taking everybody's stuff, throwing it in the garbage truck. I was like, oh my God, there's my wallet, there's all my information. So when I went to the sanitation department to try to retrieve it, I never found it. There's certain things went straight into the garbage trucks. So those things, you couldn't get them back because they went straight to the dump. They dumped them. As far as from the park to here, I understand that you weren't involved in it, but how did it arrive? What was it traveling on our, in? In, on our sanitation, cut down vehicles. On our trucks, not garbage trucks, but on our cut down, which are open bed trucks that can 
the sides walls can come off. So we filled them up that way. Once they got here, we took the wall, the side walls off and put it down so we can sort the, the material. The police told us that they were gonna take our stuff that they found in the park and move it to a different location. They gave us the address of that location. And now they're loading our stuff into a trash compactor to destroy it. Like in the press they said they denied that they used trash compactors which they, we saw them using, compacting our stuff and destroying our stuff intentionally. Now if this guitar was broken into a couple of pieces, then you could tell that it was, might be an accident. You know, they're rushing, they're doing things fast. I'm not, this is intentional destruction of property. We're being, basically, we're being persecuted, punished against our Fourth Amendment rights. Look at this guitar. This is not, this is not an accident. This is willful destruction of property. And now they're saying, we can claim it back from the city. Our, our computers that have been trodden on and broken, we can claim them back from the city. So now the taxpayers are paying money to replace stuff that the NYPD and the sanitation department willfully destroy. It looks like there's been systematic destruction of the laptops. Um, like, uh, it looks like somebody, they said, has come and stomped on all the laptops. Like, it's just, it's all of them. They look like they've been damaged in similar ways. If you stand up against the, the, the government, in any way, if you, if you petition your government under your First Amendment rights, this can happen to you. No, no, we did no, not no, do no, anything no, to resist no, like, them taking our stuff. No, like, we, st we stood I by imagine, and watched like, in horror, and then we were all being charged with the fact that we're supposed to have dis disrupted a government that's agency. That's we did nothing. They did this quite by themselves. Stuff doesn't matter to me. My rights matter to me. The only th possession I had that was of value to my heart was my Bible, which I begged them not to take from my hands. They could have arrested me holding my Bible behind my back, fine. They took it and they threw it in the pile of trash with everything else. I feel incredibly angry, sad, um, and like <laughs> ready to, to do something about it. You know, if anything, I think that this was incredibly useful to radicalize and mobilize more we're supporting. We're standing up for the rights of this country because we love and believe in it. Like I came here from England. Like I believed in the dream of this place. The freedom I found from the people, the, the, the beauty of the people here has kept me here. But this is not the beauty of the government, the beauty of the system, which is completely corrupt at this point. You know, stand up for your rights, people, before it's too late. Louder! We are 99%! The world is watching! We are 99%! We are!